September 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 6 from the New Testament. Those who are under the yoke as slaves must regard their own masters as deserving of full respect. This will prevent the name of God and Christian teaching from being discredited. But those who have believing masters must not show them less respect because they are brothers. Instead, they are to serve all the more because those who benefit from their service are believers and dearly loved. Teach them and exhort them about these things. If someone spreads false teachings and does not agree with sound words, that is, those of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the teaching that accords with godliness, he is conceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in controversies and verbal disputes. This gives rise to envy, dissension, slanders, evil suspicions, and constant bickering by people corrupted in their minds and deprived of the truth who suppose that godliness is a way of making a profit. Now godliness combined with contentment brings great profit, for we have brought nothing into this world, and so we cannot take a single thing out either. But if we have food and shelter, we will be satisfied with that. Those who long to be rich, however, stumble into temptation and a trap, and many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils. Some people, in reaching for it, have strayed from the faith and stabbed themselves with many pains. But you, as a person dedicated to God, keep away from all that. Instead, pursue righteousness, godliness, faithfulness, love, endurance, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith and lay hold of that eternal life you were called for and made your good confession for in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and Christ Jesus, who made his good confession before Pontius Pilate, to obey this command without fault or failure until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose appearing the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, will reveal at the right time. He alone possesses immortality and lives in unapproachable light, whom no human has ever seen or is able to see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. Command those who are rich in this world's goods not to be haughty or to set their hope on riches, which are uncertain, but on God who richly provides us with all things for our enjoyment. Tell them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous givers sharing with others. In this way, they will save up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the future and so lay hold of what is truly life. O Timothy, protect what has been entrusted to you. Avoid the profane chatter and absurdities of so-called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed from the faith. Grace be with you all. God, there seems to be a, a fast-growing trend, especially amongst the mega churches, for what is called the prosperity doctrine, that if you only believe enough, then God will give you riches um, and provide you wealth. And we actually see this wealth in the pastors and preachers of these church, many who have homes and multiple cars and helicopters to travel between their churches. Um, and right here, Paul's really clear about that. If someone spreads false teachings and does not agree with sound words, that is those of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teachings that accords with godliness. He is conceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in controversies and verbal disputes. This gives rise to envy, dissension, slanders, evil suspicions, and constant bickering by people corrupted in their minds and deprived of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a way of making a profit. And this particular chapter goes on to talk about money issues. But it just breaks my heart that so many people follow these mega churches and some of the smaller churches are starting to teach this true, this uh, passion for if you only wish hard enough and have faith enough that God will give you the desires of your heart. And they completely screw up that particular part of the Bible because that's not what that chapter and verse is saying. 
Of course you will give us the desires of our heart for two reasons. One, it will either be your will or two, you will give us the desires of our heart to teach us a lesson so that we can uh, move back into a path of your will. Uh, it doesn't say that you're going to become the Santa Claus in our life and give us anything and everything we so wish and so desire. Uh, and again, Paul makes that really clear having to do with money and wealth and possessions in this particular chapter. And it just breaks my heart because I have a lot of friends who go to these types of churches and I see it in their lives. There's, there's this level of selfishness in their, um, in their faith. And you, that's between you and them. All I know is what Paul says. And I try really, really hard to stick as close to the Bible as I can. Um, sometimes to the point that it's so black and white that I annoy other people. But this one's pretty clear. Paul is pretty clear speaking your words in this particular chapter. And God, I just pray for all the people that are buying into these false preachers. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do with these preachers preachers and pastors who have swept all these people along with this belief in, in this prosperity doctrine. Um, that's up to you and your justice. But I do pray for the people who believe so much in them. They believe their words. They defend them online. Um, they passionately say that they uh, are bringing God's word to the people. And so, you know, small variations in um, what they speak about or a sentence or two here and there out of place shouldn't affect that overall they're just amazing men and women of God. Sorry. Ah, personally, I think that's a bunch of crap because I know you are our sovereign God. You can use anybody any way that you want to. Even false preachers and pastors out there who are preaching uh uh, selfish kingdom doctrine. I, I'm going to call it that. That's all about the people rather than about you. I, I don't think that they are men and women of God in the slightest. I think they're being used by the devil and you come in on top of it and allow some of the words that they say to make sense to the believers and, and inspire believers to have a stronger life in your will. But as far as being men and women of God, um, no. <laughs> That's like the whole throwing pearls before swine thing uh, kind of concept. Anyways, I just, I really appreciate chapters like this where everything is very strong. Everything's black and white. It is not a gray area. Paul is very clear about what he's saying here. There's, there's not a whole lot of room in here for any disagreement or discussion. Um, what they are teaching the prosperity doctrine churches is wrong. Um, and it is very scary to me how many people attend those churches and buy into that doctrine and can actually attempt to argue their way into the approval of that doctrine. It's just absolutely astounding to me. God, just help, help us and hold our hearts to your word, to the truth of your word, to the purity of your word, and to why you created it in the first place. You didn't create it to give us a bunch of rules and regulations to drive us crazy. You gave it to us because you love us, because you want what is best in our lives. And I know from my previous life that that pursuit of wealth, um, gosh, I never want that again in my life. It doesn't mean that you don't provide me amazing blessings, but just like Paul's talking about in here, now I know what to do with those blessings, to turn around and give them back to your kingdom, as opposed to before where I was just building up my own kingdom here on earth, my own pile of wealth. Um, I, yeah, I never want to go back to that again, God. So please keep our hearts truthful to the purity of your word and why you created it in the first place. And God, please help these people see the truth. Um, there's so many people out there following that prosperity doctrine because it makes them, as one person told me, it makes me feel good to come out of church knowing that I am going to only have to have faith and God is going to give me money. Ah, God, I'm so sorry. That just breaks my heart. I can't imagine what it's doing to yours. God, I continue to pray for the purity of your word in all men, in all women's hearts, whether they are believers or unbelievers, and what your plan and what your will is for their lives. In your son's name I pray. Amen.